And I'm back. Yep, that was quick. I watched two movies today, so... Hi, Void. Jumping right back in again. I said I was speeding up. I meant it. And... Son of Kong is my second one for today. And after how much I enjoyed the original King Kong, not as much enjoyment on Son of Kong, unfortunately. It wasn't bad. It's just lackluster, to say the least, I suppose. And I can understand why it was. It's clear that most of the production crew's heart really wasn't in doing Son of Kong. So, it came out the same year as King Kong, and that kind of tells you something. So, when you're trying to do a big budget, and actually has less of a budget than King Kong as well, so, trying to do a smaller budget follow-up to King Kong, with more stop motion, and no idea what to do with it, you only get so far. Now, uh... It does uh, pick up with several of the original cast members. Carl Denham's back, as well as his uh, boatman, uh, Captain Englehorn. So those two reprise their roles, and nobody else. And the only other character they reference from the first movie is Kong himself. So, the main romantic uh, pair in that? Not here at all. Never referenced. And... It's clear they really didn't know what they were doing. They, the story is kind of paper thin, and the t and the titular monkey doesn't even appear until like a good forty minutes into the movie, which is fine. But the movie is seventy minutes. It's short, and they don't do much with it. So plot. Uh, Carl Denham, entertainingly, I will say, in the beginning kind of got a chuckle out of me, as the, it picks up with Carl Denham, the big shot movie producer from the first one, is having financial problems because of his issues with Kong, as he's being sued by every person who got their buildings damaged, uh, and he's being indicted by a grand jury, and... He's being, having debt collectors and uh, solicitors calling on him to try to collect bills. So he's lost all his money, he's lost all his respect, he can't really work as a filmmaker anymore, and the whole world's coming for him. And I found that actually pretty entertaining, just considering how much larger than life he was in the first one. And he is played by the same actor, again, and it works out pretty well. So, what does he do? He meets up with his old friend Cap Captain Englehorn and just leaves. Ships out of New York and just goes boating. Uh, and pretty much works shipping with uh, Captain Englehorn to just escape the law and uh, ease his financial troubles. Uh, eventually, they land on... Uh, I can't remember where it was, um, doo -doo -doo -doo, and it doesn't mention it on here, but I believe uh, somewhere towards the east, uh, they land, uh, have a, land at a small spot where and they, they see a show that uh, a retired circus guy is putting on with his daughter. He thinks she's good, but uh, is a wasted talent here. And they just are killing time until while well, they figure out their next move. And they realize that they're getting kind of close to where Skull Island was, but they don't really have a reason to go back, though it's... They both kind of note it. Meanwhile, uh, a girl who's actually pretty much unnamed in the movie, uh, she's given a name in the credits, but uh, they just gave her, like, a stage name, but they never actually say her name in the movie. See, this, this whole film has some problems down on a script level. If uh, the character of Hilda's name is never even said. Anyway, uh, she's the, the daughter of the, cir of the little mini circus owner. 
her father gets killed in a drunken scuffle that burns down her tent. And after she was talking to Carl Denning for a while beforehand, she tries to uh, see if she can get either a job with him or a boat ride out. Meanwhile, the guy who killed her father is the same man who sold Carl Earl the map to Skull Island. And he now knows he is up for murder and is trying to get out of there soon. So he talks to Carl about going back and getting out of here and going to Skull Island to... I didn't tell you about the treasure on the island. There's, right, right, sorry, there's a treasure there. Huh? Huh? It's pretty obvious that he's just making things up to say anything to get to Carl to take him. But it works. Anyway, uh, they ship then, well, he takes on, uh, this man, uh, what was it, uh, Captain, then, uh, ah, Captain Hellstrom, and, uh, Hilda sneaks on board, only to discover each other mid-voyage. Problems come when Captain Hellstrom leads a mutiny to take over the boat and gets Carl and Captain Engelhorn and uh, Hilda sent out in a lifeboat. Only to be thrown off the boat himself shortly thereafter. And the Chinese cook, who goes by Charlie, though he's only credited as Chinese cook, I'm not sure if they're using that as, like, a, if they're trying to be a, if that's his actual name, or if they're just trying to use some sort of stereotype. They say he's Chinese, and, and he is cartoonishly Chinese. It's, I'm not sure if this is the same character as in the first movie. It's played by a different actor. I did look that up, but, uh... I'm not sure if it's supposed to be the same uh, character from uh, the original King Kong. It's act He's acting the same, and I suppose it's on the same boat, so it's probably the same character. Uh, so, you got uh, the two old friends, Carl and Captain Englehorn, the girl, the Chinese stereotype, and the untrustworthy rogue that are all now stranded near... Skull Island. They try to land on the only landable beach and get chased immediately off by the natives. So they're forced to roll around essentially the back side of the island and find a little narrow way in. And which they encounter more dinosaurs and the son of Kong. Who is only about, they say 12 feet, but his height seems to kind of shift depending on the scene of whether people are standing up to his knee or his ankle or he'll fit in their hands still. It's unclear of how big the son of Kong really is. They usually just call him Little Kong. Apparently they did actually want to give the son of Kong a name, but it's never said in the movie, and it was decided after the movie was filmed, that they wanted to call him Kiko, an abbreviation for Ki Kong. So, But they just call him Little Kong. I'm not sure if... So, anyway, uh, the treasure is revealed to be a myth, but they find it anyway. Figure that. And uh, after they help uh, Little Kong out of the quicksand, he begins pretty much following around Carl and, uh, and Hilda, and acting as their protector. So, uh, they manage to break into a t uh, his temple and find some treasure. And more dinosaurs attack. Now, after this, it's clear they had no idea how to end this movie. And it's very clear. Because after this, it ends. In a manner that doesn't make any sense at all. Okay. So, there's an earthquake. I think. Whole island starts shaking. Now, this doesn't... Is this because they violated the temple? Because they took this jeweled necklace? I don't know. They make 
no clear indication on why the, there's suddenly an earthquake. But the island starts sinking. Uh, the natives are shown trying to escape the island, but considering they only had showed one little boat, that's one tribe that's probably pretty dead. And uh, our the roguish backstabber gets eaten by a sea serpent. But uh, now, then the island sinks, and Kong is pretty much the only thing left standing on top of the island holding Carl up so he can get up to a boat. Some questions. Okay, there were a lot of other big things on that island. Where did they all go while the island was sinking? Because it's clear they all would have headed towards the top, but only Kong made it up there. To the highest point. Where were all the flying things. Also, where did the sun come from? I'm fully willing to believe that Kong might have, there might have been a Mrs. Kong somewhere on the island. Okay, sure, fine, fine, I'm okay with that. Where is she? I mean, I'm fine not having her in the movie, but if the island sinks and the little Kong is able to get towards the top. And he's much smaller than she. Or his father. Where is she? Is she dead? Is... Are there other Kongs? There's a lot of questions here. I mean... Maybe... I mean, they're offering Kong more women, so is this because Mrs. Kong is already dead? Is... Little Kong now the last of the species? There were dinosaurs that were bigger, that were Kong-sized, so why were they unable to get towards the top? It didn't seem like a hard of a climb. I mean, Little Kong just walked, really. So yeah, it ends. Oh, and then they're rescued. And the stop motion isn't bad, but it's clearly not as good as it was in the, the other one. Though it doesn't have the same must effect that uh, King Kong had of his hair constantly moving. They seem to go with more of a matte clay for the, uh, for the little Kong. It's fine. The people looked okay, but some of the other effects just weren't nearly as good. This movie didn't need to exist. It doesn't really add anything, and it's clear they just turned this out as quick as possible just to capitalize on King Kong. It's not unwatchable, and it's entertaining enough, but I can only give Son of Kong two MacGuffins. It's... It doesn't do enough to further anything. It was good to see kind of a, more of a follow-up with Carl Denning, or denim? Denim. Blech. But. If you're gonna do a Kong movie, do more of Kong. Less. running around shipping and murder plot. Okay. That's all on this one. 1933, Son of Kong. Watch it if you're about curious, but. You. You'll get through it. You won't be bored, but it doesn't add much. The, the plot's spread way too thin to be practically transparent. I'd give it a pass, but if you're a kaiju or King Kong fan, eh, you'll be fine. Have a good night.